Okay. I think now the audio is working. Thank you, Baxter, for always keeping us on. So we'll go ahead and restart that since there was no audio. Uh, welcome to another Pixel Live feed. Every Wednesday we're here. It's one of my favorite times of the week. So I'm E.T., as you know. Hi, everyone. I'm Haley. And I'm Jose. So, yes, here we are. And we've already got some... Uh, yay, we've got sound. So um, we also... Baxter, since you were here last week... Um, we, I changed the bit rate to a little bit lower, so is the streaming coming through pretty smoothly for you? And you can see now we have a chat window. Yes. Yes, our, our live feed is technical prowess. Hopefully you can understand what yeah. we're talking about now. Mm -hmm. You can see when chats come in. So. Yeah, so hopefully the video feed also is coming through. Uh, what happened last week... Um, Yay! Yeah. What happened last week was uh, I had it to... I got a little ambitious. I wanted to stream in <laughs> 720p. And not a good thing, because even if you go and look at the recording from last week, like it's like, good job. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, all right, we'll drop it down a level and hopefully that works. So yay, yeah. I'm glad that it's really good. So wow, another Thanks, week as Baxter always. Baxter for the tip anyways. Yes, <laughs> uh, yes, Baxter has been like that constant, steady person. Yes. You know, like how long have I known you, Baxter, now for a little over a year? You know, and I feel like you're a friend. Like I'm, I turn around, and Baxter's always there, and got our back, watching yeah. out for us. Yeah, Baxter's just really knowledgeable with live feeds, and so, and obviously, uh, I'm not. I can program and make a game, but I can't, can't figure a out a live feed, feed, which is just absolutely crazy. So, <laughs> and so, no, actually, for OBS is uh, since we're using a Mac, uh, we're using Wirecast. So the thing is, is I just, I just need to learn the software, uh, but I think I know it well enough now that you know we're streaming so <laughs> yeah. that's step one it's not a priority of mine to get like our live feed like a news um, channel type quality yeah. you know we have a lot of other priorities <laughs> outside of that but as long as you can hear and see us and you come and hang out then this is what it's supposed to be about yes. right yes so you never know what you're gonna get so that's half the fun i guess <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get so no so it looks like we have some folks um who have started reading the book which yes. is good yeah good so uh Bergy, third act I don't know. Is Bergie here? Yeah, he's here. Oh, he is? Where are yeah. you, Bergie? Where are you? He's always there. He's in the chat. Oh, he's in the chat. Yeah. Okay, good. I didn't see him. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, yeah, so I know um, Bergie is in it. I know uh, Lump uh, just recently got it, so he should have gotten it. Oh. I didn't check the shipping, but... I uh, still need to get my copy. Yes! Good. Get your copy. Yes. Um, um, I know that the Lost still has some, I yep. think. Um it was funny because I went into the bank uh, to put some money into the Pixel checking account. Yay! Uh, so our aunt sent us some checks. You know, they're like one of the few people that sent checks. So I had to go and do. But the bank teller was like, oh, I totally got your book yesterday. You know, I was like, that oh, was cool. awesome. That's cool to hear. It's cool yeah. to see that they're going out and buying it. And... Ah, limp is Sam. Oh, Gosh. okay. Hi, Sam. Hi, Sam. Good to see you. <laughs> kind of hidden back here with cereal. Oh, I love cereal. Yes. <laughs> uh, my one of my favorite cereals is Reese's Pieces. Really like that. Oh. So, I've had it been. I have to eat special K now. <laughs> I'm trying to be good. Okay. <laughs> That's rabbit food. Yeah. Yeah. I almost got like the cookies, like the little cookie crisp cereal. Oh, but I got Cheerios instead. Oh, well, that's the sugar, but, uh, Limp, I know you were asking about Mark, so, so, you know, Mark is my brother, and your brother, yeah. and your, what do you call that? Brother He's my brother. Brother, <laughs> brother-in-law, yeah, but Mark was working with us, uh, the first half of the year, but then he left in June, uh, to kind of pursue his own passions and things yeah. like that, so, you know, I guess this entrepreneurial bug is just kind of, like, all in us, so, yeah. uh, it is what it is, so, yeah, Mark, Mark's no longer affiliated with the Pixel, you know, but... He's very much a fan and a supporter, so oh, yes. and Big always time. will be. So, yeah. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that's good. So another kind of significant thing this week, I spent some time yesterday doing a video, which I, I feel like I just talked to the camera. <laughs> like you, that's what you, it looks like. I know <laughs> that's what you're doing. I know. <laughs> I just sit here and I'm like staring into the camera and talking, and then I'm just like, Do people really want to listen to this? Like, oh my gosh! But I definitely because you know it was yesterday. Yeah. Was one year uh, from when our Kickstarter, Kickstarter ended, which is just mind blowing. It's already been yeah. a year. <laughs> it's been one yes. year since the Kickstarter, and it literally has been like a snap of the yeah. finger. I mean, I know we were talking to some people on our Facebook page, and they kind of said the same thing. It's like, what? It's already been a year, you know. So I kind of felt it was nice just to kind of do like a really quick. Uh, 
these farting chairs. <laughs> if you hear weird noises, it's these chairs. Like if, it's one, they're one of those chairs where you move. They're dining room chairs. We had to figure out a way to yeah. get us all so, in the picture. I swear, I am not gassy today, so <laughs> it's the chairs. Uh, but, you know, it was one year, which is super significant. And, uh, you know, a lot of people were just like, yeah, it has been a year already. Yeah. And I think, you know, so let me, let me ask you guys a question. So what was, what's been you, your favorite moment? I mean, uh, obviously you weren't really involved right from, <coughs> you kind of were. I mean. Because, I mean, you were part of the Kickstarter. Kickstarter. So yeah. what would you say was one of your favorite personal moment um, in the past year? Oh, gosh. I mean, I think just seeing you. Obviously the Kickstarter was very impactful for me too. Because mm-hmm. I knew what you were going through. Mm-hmm. And I wanted you to succeed so bad. And I mm-hmm. wasn't a part of a pixel at that time. Yeah. But yet... I wanted this for you so bad. So I just remember calling you and being on like FaceTime with you. And we were waiting because we knew the money was coming in mm. to finish the Kickstarter. And we just wanted to see your expression. And just seeing you reach your goal, that yeah. was amazing. Like I loved that moment, yeah. knowing that you'd done it. Yeah. You know, that was just... Yeah, it was a, definitely a special moment, you know, because... I think anyone who's ever done a Kickstarter, you know, you, you start and it's all positive and this kind of stuff. And then you hit that like <sighs> kind of lull, which we definitely hit a lull, you know, and then all of these terrible things start running through your head. Yep. Like what's going to happen if it doesn't and dot, 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 you know, so no, kind of with your guys' surprise to make sure that I hit that amount, you know, and then all the stuff that came in afterwards was yes. really, like I said, it was, it was one of the most touching and impactful things in my life. So thanks yes. again to all of you. I know yes. a bunch of you out there. Um, really contributed to the project. Yes. So, what about you, Jose? Well, that would be one of them. <laughs> of course, I would think as a, as a company, uh, Comic Con. Comic Con was probably yeah. one of the most fun experiences I've had. Yeah. Uh, since being with a Pixel, just getting the, you know, kind of the screenshots of the game and mm. talking about the book and all that stuff, just creating a lot of buzz and excitement for it. I really, really enjoyed that. And for for you guys that don't know me, I am not. Uh, the biggest fan of talking to people. I like to keep to myself. <laughs> as you can see with a lot of these live feeds. <laughs> <laughs> nah. No, it was cool. You know, it was, um, you know, I kind of talked about the <coughs> Kickstarter video, but going out in front of, you know, strangers, yeah. putting your work out there and getting just raw feedback, yep. you know, because of course, you know, like we said before, a lot of your family and friends are going to be those people that are like, Jaded. oh, good yeah. job. <laughs> yeah. And I totally love that. And you totally need that in your life, but you also need outside people to really, say, what do people think? dude, that sucks or do something different, you yeah. know? So it was nerve wracking, but you know, like we've summarized before, I think it was a really wonderful learning experience from us. And I really think that you know, all the people that came and saw the work that we were doing were so really, positive. yeah, so positive. And, you know, I think like looking at all of the games in that room that were there, Phoenix Dawn definitely was different. Yeah, it stood out by far. It definitely stood out. I think one of the big things that stood out was it was 3D. You know, a lot of 2 which is definitely a trend in indie games mm-hmm. right now, you know, is 2D. And 3D is a whole nother beast, you know. So the fact that we were 3D, no other RPGs yeah. there. No. Definitely no None. RPGs, you know. Nope. So... You know, and there's a reason for that because RPGs are not easy to make. They're incredibly <laughs> uh, complex and intense and require a lot of effort in yes. systems and story and characters. So, yeah, like, like I, I think one of the things that uh, stood out to me from the Kickstarter last year was, you know, people were like, you're crazy. You've never made a game before. And you're going this And ambition. you want to make an RPG <laughs> game. And you want to do it in 3D. Like, what's, what's your problem? Yeah. You know? <laughs> and I, I uh, uh, fast forward a year later, you know, I definitely understand, like, yeah, I it's am crazy. a lot. <laughs> you know, but it still boils down to, at the end of the day, this is the game that I wanted to make. Yeah. You know, I didn't want to make some, like, mobile da 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 or, you know, uh, RPG games have always been one of those kind of games that really stick with me, and I wanted to make one, and so I felt like if I could make an RPG game that I liked, then hopefully other people would like it too, so... That was my the the reason behind the insanity there, and you know there are definitely times like God, I should have just made something so something simple. <laughs> Why did I pick an RPG? But you know at the same time, like going to work on the game every day has been fun. Like yeah. it's been really cool to just work on it. You know, it's like oh my gosh, I'm making something that I like. So that's been good. Yeah. So being another big thing too, it's been cool to see throughout this past year is really people start to get to know a pixel. Yeah. Like you actually hear it around the community or people see us and they know, hey, that's a pixel. It's like, that's really cool that we're actually, the company's starting to get out there. Yes. You know, and people know about <clears throat> Phoenix Dawn or they talk about the book now, you know, yes. and they're reading the book and they, and it's just 
really cool to hear that people now know about us and we're starting to get out there and yeah. it's just cool to see our names out there. So Yeah. And Uber Gamer says, you know, yeah, I was scared it wouldn't happen either and loved it in those last <laughs> Yeah, it was scary, but Stressful. you know, one of the things that I ended with in the video I did yesterday was kind of like my big takeaway from this last year is fear, you know, and mm -hmm. that, you know, I really wish that I, you could read those cliche comments and say, go for your dreams, live it, you know, but the reality is so many people won't ever pursue their passion because yeah. of the fear. Yeah. And it's not that they're weak or anything like that. It's, it's really scary. It's very scary. It's, uh, like oh, you guys yeah. know. It's, it's very scary. And there's so when you're staring fear in the mm -hmm. eyes, you know, there are many times, even the last couple months where yeah. it would have been like, can we carry on? Is, mm -hmm. Are we going to be able to do this? Get through this. And you have to be able to like stand your ground while you're looking fear directly in the yeah. face and say, no. We're going to make this happen. We're going to make this happen. <laughs> it's not our time to end yet, you know, yeah. so... Um, fear is really the mortal enemy of creativity, innovation, and it's a big thing that, you know, everyone, no matter how successful you are, you always will deal with that fear. Because I said, yeah. even if Phoenix, Dawn, and Pixel become successful, we are still always yeah. fighting for our survival. Who knows what the next one's going to be? You know, I think you the, know? the reason why so many companies end up going down is they get comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, they get in a spot where they release something good, and they're like, oh, all this money's coming in, they stop innovating, yeah. they stop... Um, get complacent with everything. Yeah, they get the complacent. Rest of the stuff is crap. <clears throat> exactly. So it's really very important to be humble, no yeah. matter what the outcome is, you know, yeah. and that's if what's going to This goes keep well, together. okay, let's hope for the next, let's work our butts off just like we did for this one. Yes. Make the next one just as yes. good, and just keep it up. Yes, that's the mentality we have to have going into every single future yep. game that we go is like our reputation and our company is dependent on this and so that's the difference between working for a company and running a yes. company you know is Make working sure. for a company like oh they go under i'll go find another job starting your own company you're always oh. having to be aware like there's actually a great book i i don't know why i'm looking for it here oh my gosh i forgot the title of it and it can't, it's um oh creativity inc uh, check it out. It's a wonderful book that talks about uh, Ed Catmull, who's one of the uh, co-founders of Pixar. And he did a book um, talking about how to be a leader in a creative company. And one of the things that stuck out to me in that book was him talking about always being aware of your threats. You know, um, and that's kind of what your job is running a company is, is to see those threats and to, and to take advantage and not to take advantage of them, but to be forewarned about them and yeah. do something about it. And a lot of times it just becomes complacent. So, yeah. anywho, so... Well, 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 what else? So yeah, big thing, o already over a year. Yeah. Uh, really summarized, we had some significant things. Obviously, the book uh, happened. Was, yeah. You guys joined yeah. uh, Comic-Con, <laughs> launching the book. Uh, um, and like I said, so far, I've been, we've been really happy with the feedback. Um, you know, obviously, we want more and more people to get the book out there. Yes. You know, um, but it's pretty much everything that we've seen so far, has, knock on wood, yes. uh, has been that people have really enjoyed it. And, you know, this was kind of my first litmus test for Phoenix Dawn because yep. if people read the book and they didn't like it, they're not going to like the game. Nope. And it's pretty black and white as that, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm happy so far that the trend has been that people really yes. like it. And the people that have read through the final act, Act 3, which is the game storyline, have been really kind of, I think, very pleasantly surprised and frustrated yes. by the ending. <laughs> but that's what it's supposed to be. Yes, that's what we wanted. <laughs> we wanted. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's good. So, and then hopefully, you know, the, like we said, if this does well, you know, we've set the story up for two additional yes. pieces. Yep. So, um, you know, so we can continue Phoenix. That's the thing. I just want this to go well. Yes. I want to see the next two come yeah. play. Like, yeah. I'm so excited to have those. Yes. Ugh. Yes, because, you know, it's like one of those things where you're, like, you're creating a story, and, like, all the time I'm always thinking about the Phoenix Dawn story and, like, where it goes, like, where do Inca do and Phoenix go and this kind of stuff, yeah. so. But I don't want to give away too much, so. <laughs> yes, Uber Gamer. Um, Way to be perfect family talk about how the game is not out and it's a waste of money, but my exact answer would be perfect and the best game I will ever play. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I think, you know, to be 100% honest, if, uh, if my intention was to just put out a game, to just make money from that yeah. game, I would probably have it ready in about a month or two. Like, honestly, to God. But um, that's not why I left Apple. That's not why I brought all you know my family in to help yeah. me out. It was not about just let's create something kind of okay, kind of a just traditional to thing, out. to meet a deadline, to get it out. Um, I That's not what I did Kickstarter for. I did this because... 
you know, especially as our first game. Yes. It's going to take a while, mm -hmm. but if it does well, my first thing that I'm doing is bringing on experienced people. Yes. Which is really going to accelerate the game development process. Um, so, yes, and, you know, if, if we release the game and you don't like it, then shame on us. And that's our fate, right? And that's, yep. that's the risk that we take as a company. If we don't put out a great product, then people don't buy it. We deserve not to be there. So, yep. um, so yeah. So, and that's why these live feeds are important. Like the game is being developed as we talk, you know, like, um, and getting your feedback and just making it really good. So, yep. um, all right. So question, where do the story from the book match up with the story from the game? Yeah. So, um, the book is three acts. First two acts, act one and two are not the game. It is basically the prequel. So it's safe yep. to say if you don't want any spoilers for the game story, uh, one and two are totally fine. I'm it sets three. up our character, it sets up our world. It's act three that is our entire game storyline. Yep. So um, that's if you don't want any spoilers, don't read act three. I even put yep. a little spoiler yes, alert, alert page like, hey. Um, but like I said, you know, some people are holding off to read act three, which is totally fine. But also be aware that we're adding to that story yes. come the game. So it's not going to be totally like, oh, I've already... Everything in the I've... book. Yeah, there's more to it. There's so much more to it that will be a part of the game. Yeah, so. and I think people have realized when you read Act 3, there are some parts that we've fast-forwarded yep. through. You know, and specifically because that's where there's a lot a of gameplay that. is going to happen. You know, and there's three magical monuments. But we only talk about one in the book called Evermore. You know, so there's two whole other areas yep. in this world that you don't see in the book, that, but you will see and experience in the game, so... <laughs> oh thank you thank you yes so you know it's like one of those things uh one of my favorite quotes don't let success go to your head or failure to your heart and that's going to be kind of my guiding light forever yeah. it's like we just got to keep going so keep going keep going so uh what else what's oh, going on here to uh, to piggyback on the stuff with the book yeah uh, we just created a phoenix dawn uh, facebook page that is kind of like a book club uh, where people that have read the book can actually go and discuss it. So if you haven't read the third act, you might want to stay away until you actually complete the book. But it's just the people that are fans of the book to go yeah. and just kind of discuss things, their favorite characters, favorite scenes, things like that. So yeah. uh, if you guys get a chance to go to the Facebook Phoenix Dawn page, like it, and then we can start some book discussions. Yeah, well, that's good. Because, and we decided on that because... As we get closer now with releasing builds and getting people into testing and, you know, we're gearing up for a Steam Early Access, you know, kind of initial yeah. launch by the end of the year, that the Pixel Facebook page is going to get a lot of boom, 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 you know, because we're going to want to share book reviews and things like that. Yeah. So it's important for us now to kind of start um, separating our brands, like a Pixel, the company, but then yeah. we also have our IP and our franchise, which is Phoenix Dawn. So that's what that page is. So yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah, so <laughs> let us know what you think. You know, we're going to yeah. be here every Wednesday, um, so we'd love to hear your thoughts yep, on the Yeah, and that's the, the thing. I mean, so far we have gotten a lot of positive feedback on yep. the book. It's just getting the word out there. Yep. Just trying to get it spread so more and people know about it, um, and hopefully can, then can get excited for the game to come, too. So help us get the word out. And Yes. All right, so should we talk a little bit about the game and kind yes. of show everyone where we're currently at? Yep. So. Like I said, I'm averaging now about a thousand lines of code per week, which is crazy. I am falling in love with code. It's math, logic, and that kind of stuff. Uh, ah, yes, don't spoil it for people, please. I might have to accidentally delete that post on the community. But no, so yeah, I've been averaging about a thousand lines of code every week. Uh, this has been a significant build that I'm working on now, which I'm going to be finishing by Friday. Uh, so just a quick recap is that uh, we're curr I'm currently working on build A21. Yep. Which is the which this build specifically is about polish. It's about going in and adding everything that I've basically built, scrubbing it up and making it look better. Yep. Because then every time that I hit these big builds, I'll go back and just polish, polish it up, up some more, polish it up some more. So the preview that we're going to show, we're going to show you the latest final build prior to the version that I'm working on now, which is A17. So there are seven builds. Uh, six of those seven builds are what are called feature and bugs. So for me, I'm not concerned about how does it visually look no. and this kind of stuff. It's just, does the HP bar move when I get hit? Does the magic points bar change when I cast a magic spell? When I defeat a, yeah. a, a thing, do I get experience points so I can level up? So it's really just about function over form. Framework. Yep. The just framework. It to work. Yep. And so what you're going to see is pretty much the final function feature build. Um, and then the version that I'm working on now will be done by Friday. 
and then we'll probably be showing you next Wednesday is the first kind of more polished build. So now I've got those things in place. What makes sense from a UI standpoint, uh, playability standpoint, things like that. So <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you for helping us get the word out. Yes, that's Courtney, by the way. Oh, <laughs> CFG two three one. Oh, Courtney, my <laughs> love. Mwah. Courtney, CFG231, uh, is a phenomenal teacher in New York City. She teaches math. I love math, so I totally... She's been a good friend of mine for a while. So, uh, love you, Courtney. So, let's go ahead and just show you this uh, build. So, we're going to go ahead and transition a little over. bit. Yep. Oh, All right, so I'm going to sit... Where do you sit? <clears throat> I'm going to sit where you're sitting. Oh, kicking me out. I'm kicking you out, yes. All right, so I can transition to the desktop, and I'm going to move the mic so you can hear me all right and i gotta move all this stuff Ooh, this light is like in my face all right the people. Joy of live feeds, right? oh the joy of live feeds okay you know i can see me so close i did not shave i need to shave okay that's enough so let's transition to the desktop and let's get the show on the road all right Okay, so, yes, as always, disclaimer, this is a work in progress. So many things changing, and this build specifically is a feature build and not a polished build. So, All right, so we're loading the game here. Got some of our logos. Uh, same menu you can see down here. I've changed it to build A17. A, in the um, new build, the A21, something I'm very proud of is I've went through and the text. Like, I'm, I'm a font. What do you call it? I'm a font. Freak. Nazi. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a font freak. Yeah. I really love fonts. And the thing that's been driving me crazy with all of these builds is that uh, when you look at this build on a retina display, the font looks terrible. And so it is kind of pixelated. So I have fixed that, which is wonderful. Um, and I found a wonderful font called the Nexa. And so I'm going to play around with it tomorrow and see if it's going to be our final, one of our final fonts. But beautiful font and a big thing on capitalization. So, And then in this build, I took out the video in the back because it, it looks like it's snowing and there's really no places on Mythe right now that snow. snow. <laughs> it could be in the Makira Mountains. It could be in the Makira wow. Mountains. Yeah, I see ashes or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Ashes yeah, of a fallen, yeah, ashes of fallen <laughs> warriors. But... Uh, the, actually, the new build has the uh, screenshot from Evermore in the back, and so I think it looks really good. So, all right, let's go ahead and jump into a new game, and uh, fonts, really. yeah. <laughs> and so here we go. So, in this, this is kind of like that preloader screen. So, in A21, I got working right here above where it says "Press any key to continue." You can toggle. I got uh, the random tooltips working. So now it's awesome. So I have a bunch of different tooltips. So every time that you load the scene, you get a different tooltip. Uh, and it won't be a black screen back here. There'll be some image of Evermore, which actually has already been changed. So A21 is a nice polished build. So let's just go ahead and jump in and look at this very unpolished part, but some significant improvements from um, last time. So it says, now entering Evermore, the Forgotten Dunes. <clears throat> okay, so let me tell you a little bit about what were some of the significant changes and what were the goals of this build. And the, and the prior builds of A1. So my goals going into this was these three bars down here. So you can see on the top one, we've got uh, the HP bar, your hit points. So we've got 25 out of 25. The magic points bar, 15 out of 15. And then your experience points bar. So when I hit 20 experience points, then this is your current level that will level up again. So my goal for getting this build done was... Does the HP bar work? Does the MP bar work? And can I get leveled up? So that was the goal. So then what we did is the first thing I changed was the click to move. So you can click now anywhere and he kind of just kind of runs around this kind of stuff. Um, these really quick towers that I made, which probably took like a half an hour. Um, so click to move was a big one so that you can, you know, basically it's like Diablo, but it's in a third person, you know. I guess you could say. So you can also, if you hold down the shift key, we've got some just very basic panning uh, functions so if I hold this down you know I can like look around things like that uh, so I think I have all the bars working which is wonderful and I think one of the other wonderful things you'll notice that uh, let me just have this guy attack. oh no I don't want to go and attack him yet okay <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry I'm gonna spoil it let me turn around so the other thing was an overlay so this is one of these evil towers so this is a guard tower easy as you can see this one here in the center is the hard one 
We've got another easy back there, another easy, and we've got a medium one here. So just the ability that uh, when you roll over a monster or a creature in the world that you can attack, that you see kind of its hit point bar at the top, what its name is, things like that. So basically I placed five of these towers, gave them different properties, and the idea is that there is an invisible trigger around here. Um, that as soon as I walk in this trigger, they'll start to fire at me. So let's just take a look at HP. So I'm going to go get in this guy's grill. He should start to speed up when I get too close. Oh, there he goes. Okay, he hit me. You can see my HP is going to continue attacking me until I get out of there. So, oh, I might die. Please don't die. Oh. <laughs> okay, not a good example. So even the easy ones, you don't want to stay too long because you will die. But you, as you saw with the HP, actually, I'm just going to beat him. Come here, you little crapper. Sure, yeah. So I'm just going to double click on him, and I've got this stupid little fire spell. Here we go. I'm within range. Die, die, die. Okay, one more. <sighs> okay. So what you can see down here, you can see my magic points are regenerating, and my health points are also regenerating. So I got a nice regen script in there, which can be totally toggled. And you can see I earned uh, 10 uh, experience points by doing that. So now I, the key for this demo really is to avoid this hard tower because one of the light balls from him will completely destroy you. So as we've discovered oh, many times. Many times. <laughs> so, oh, here he goes. Yeah, he's going to get there. me. Okay. No, never mind. Ah, <laughs> oh, I made their triggers. Wait, he's way too, I mean, way too powerful. So I'm going to go over here so I can get out of his range. I'm going to come and grab this guy. So the idea here is if I'm just walking and I want to attack this tower, that if I just keep clicking, Oh, the hard guys got me again. I think, <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Okay. There we go. Now, interestingly enough, as you can see, I just leveled up to level 2 because each of these easy towers I did for 10. So my HP... Oh, crap. Uh, my <laughs> HP just was up at 75 until I started walking into his realm. Turn around. Okay, so... And I've got this ball sticks in the ground, which I know exactly how to fix that. This is not the final terrain. So let me just get this last easy tower done. Okay, there you go. You're dead. Goodbye. And then, and you can see the ball is still hovering there. I know how to fix that as well. But then this is our first medium tower. And if I beat these two towers, I will level up to level three, which gives me enough hit points and magic points to beat that hard tower in the center. So if I hold down the control key, I can basically not move, but still fire. So I'm almost got him. So there's so much code behind this because I'm like attacking him. There we go. And I'm going to come over to this guy and hopefully... Probably should let my HP points regenerate a little bit. Yeah, I probably should. Die. Go, go. Oh, I'm not within range. Okay. okay. Oh, I was going to get me. Dang it. Okay. Well, that's what happened. Yeah, I know. I was kind of going rogue. But the idea the idea behind this was to circle around counterclockwise, get this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and then come over and get him, and then you'll be within range again to get this guy. So... Uh, yeah, so uh, that's kind of just the mechanics part for the A1 builds. So just getting these HP, MP, X point stuff. Because then what's going to happen in the next build is uh, when you level up, oops, and i got to make it so when you do a UI thing and he doesn't move, um, is you'll be able to assign different points to your strength, dexterity, which all have an impact on how many hit points you have, your regen rate, all kinds of things like that. So the nice thing is, is the trigger for leveling up is there. So the game now knows when I get a level up to do this. And I, there's no sound on here. I had this like really cheesy level up sound, <laughs> uh, but you don't need to hear that. So anywho, let's go ahead and just uh, return to the main menu. And let's go ahead and quit. I quit. Excellent. And let's bring back up our friend Wirecast here. And are we back? I think we are. All right. All right, so let's move back into spot. <laughs> <coughs> All right, back into spot. Here we go. There we go. Okay, awesome. So, yes, got to heal up first. So, like I said, these the, the last seven bills have just been about mechanics. Yep. So there's 3,500 lines of code. Just in there to, that one. to detect uh, when your mouse moves over the enemy, what's the enemy HP points, what's its attack rate, uh, how much damage there is when those balls of light things hit you. Um, mm -hmm. The regen gave me a lot of, yes, musical chairs. <laughs> Next time you have to take one out. You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll find out who, who loses. Yeah, who loses. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's kind of crazy. But then, like, now the nice thing is, is like it works. The regen works. Like That was probably the trickiest yeah. thing. 
is getting the regen because then oh i don't even want to go there i'll bore you with code stuff but i when i got it to work i was like hallelujah so now it's been fun because the opening and the main menu um look i think look really good yeah. uh in the newest build which you'll see next week um and everything is getting that nice uh fine tune and polish yeah. and then i haven't done any polish yet on the game world thing uh but that will be a very significant it's like we talked about last time the ui is completely changing um and i'm going to spend more time on giving putting in assets so they're going to be more permanent instead of just like putting down a quick terrain and putting on some yellow yeah. stuff on it so um so that's good and i really wanted to show it today but I ended my day uh, in the middle of creating font atlases. I don't know if anyone knows what a font <laughs> atlas is. They're fantastic. Uh, but there's the things a, you get excited about. I know. <laughs> font atlases. Font atlases are the things that make your text and your UI like look super sharp and very resolution independent. So uh, I think I figured it out like right before I got here. But because I took all the font stuff out, there's no fonts anywhere <laughs> in the game. So none of that text that you saw would be there. Yeah. is in there right now. So it's like I just needed some more time to get in there and pop it up. So... Um, yes. Um, so, uh, the next thing that I actually want to talk to about before we end the show is, so, A21 is a polish build, yep. right? So, no added features, just making Seems it look good, better. that kind of stuff, explosion, sound effects, so on and so forth. Um, I need to start thinking about what are some of the features coming in the A2 internal feature builds. So I'm just kind of curious, what would you guys... Want to see? Yeah, want to see. So here's a, here's some of my to -do, big things on my to-do list. So uh, first thing is is um, uh, changing level up so that you can add points, you know, to increase your dexterity or hit points, things like that. So that's going to get implemented if, within the A2 builds. Um, definitely need a UI for your eye selection. Yeah. So right now, since I have this fireball... I'm basically going to have to create a new eye that's going to have three different spells. And so you'll be able to swap out different spells. Uh, and then when you level up, you'll be able to select like which spell you want to level up. And then, of course, the spell will look bigger and better uh, each yeah. time that you go through. Um, and then also, I'm, I really would like to start trying inventory. Uh, so that when you destroy something, it drops yeah. items on the ground. Yeah. Each of these items have a different randomized probability. So I think I'm going to start with just creating like these little stone tablets that have our initials on them. And so the ET tablet, maybe one in 50 <laughs> times that you'll, that you'll find an E. So it's a very rare tablet, you know, and then Jose, it's like one out of two times, you know, that you'll get a... Mine goes constantly, <laughs> huh? Yeah. Man. Yeah. So I want to be able to test randomization of different items that can be found within the game. But then also, I really want to start testing 3D printing. I want to be able to find an object in the game yeah. and to see a button where I can actually purchase a physical copy of the object that I just found in the game. Um, and so I think to start with that, um, we're just going to have, uh, I don't know, I'll figure that out. But I really want to do inventory because I think inventory would be fine, which yeah. you know, is a lot of work creating an inventory screen and a, and a backpack per se, but... Uh, oh dear. That's some <laughs> cold talk going on. There. <laughs> yes. So... Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, yeah, I can't wait to show you the more polished build. Uh, I'm already really happy with it. And I was so mad that I ended with the font things. I was going to show, <laughs> at least show the menu and things like that. Yeah. But then there's no text. And I can't even control the game when I, don't, exactly. when I can't when see anything. Know. So, yep. yeah. I have seen the micro 3D printer. So, I think what will be really fun is to not only be able to buy, but if, if the player owns a 3D printer, they can print it themselves. Yeah. But that's going to be the first test of the game communicating outside of its little local box and communicating to the internet so i can say that okay you found an et stone you know whatever um there's only 10 of them that can ever be purchased printed. or printed so yeah. keeping that with the database on the pixel.com website would be interesting like that yeah i think like the the 3d printing thing was huge at yes. comic-con when we everyone started everyone loved that everyone yeah. loved the idea that oh i found this really rare sword or dagger in the in the game um, and now it's actually, I can actually have it. Yeah. And then if we set a limit, you know, like worldwide, there's only a hundred prints of this sword that you found in Phoenix. It becomes Collector. a collectible mm -hmm. item, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think it's an awesome way of bridging the physical world, the digital world. And then people love the idea that if they bought, like they bought some coins from us and stuff like that, but if they buy one of the objects in the real world, they can redeem it in the game. Yeah. You know, so if you like to collect things, like why not get a double bonus, I guess you yep. could say, where it's like, oh, cool, here's a really awesome wand or a shield. You can actually buy a physical replica of it, you know, and then also then redeem it in the game. Mm -hmm. So, 
Yes, figurines <laughs> and things like that. So I really want to get just the initial stages and just do a test of like 3D Matrix. printing it and making it look good and connecting it with the game and things like that because the Founders Coins, when we send those out when the game comes out to the Kickstarter backers, will unlock a eye. So very cool stuff. Yeah. But so yeah, so if you have any ideas about uh, some things you know Upcoming that you want to see, features. yeah. So I definitely have got in the next seven builds, I've got inventory. Uh, I've got eye selection. I've got leveling up to do. Uh, the mini map may come A2, but it more than likely will be A3 because I really want to get these core like systems in place, inventory and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then it will be A3-1, so we are almost seven builds away from opening the doors. Yep. Uh, having yes. some testers. Just having some very basic testers, so... Uh, more details to come on that, but it's all getting like really exciting. Just the now, very so. basics of the game to test it out, but it'll yeah. be exciting to have people start playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <coughs> oh, it's gonna go on my screen. Oh. So. <laughs> Bye, Lim. Always good to see you. Yes, <laughs> next week. Um, so actually, we're probably ending as well. So, yeah. uh, yes, and so then it'll be great because then I, uh, Per, you know, who is our composer yes. and his brother Jens, it'll feel so good to get them <gasps> back in the loop. You know, start uh, creating sounds. Yeah, for, for those things. of you who have not heard the first soundtrack, like definitely go listen yes. to it. It's on the Machinima Sound YouTube page. Um, really great stuff. And I am just like head over heels. I love Charm. Yeah, she's she like the was, nicest yeah. person ever. Yeah. I mean, she did uh, the vocals. The yeah. You know, and not only does she have a beautiful voice, but she's just a beautiful person. She's always like liking our stuff, and you know, I've never even met her, but so and Per was the one that brought her into the yes. loop, so. Her. Mwah. Amazing. Yes. Job. Oh, just great. You know, so, like I said, like I love the team that we have. We have yeah. such a wonderful team. So, uh, mm -hmm. this is going to be something really special. So, yes, yeah. So, uh, Per, we'll definitely talk here in the next week or two about um, getting you back in the loop and then just kind of slowly adding to it and yeah. getting ready for some Phoenix Like Dawn I said action. before, the sounds and music and everything. It just makes it all come oh. together. Oh, yeah. I mean, it just... Ugh, yeah, I remember once... the first time we put it, even with the little demo thing. Yes. That, had, that was amazing. It just... It was like, oh, my God, it brought that whole scene yes. to life. So that's why you bring in damn good people. Yes. And Per, Jens, and Sean it's are just that. damn good people. <laughs> yes, they're just that. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, friends, family, it's been a pleasure, a treasure, yes. as always. Um Stay tuned. We're going to be talking about your new live feed, uh, oh, yeah. which will probably debut <laughs> next Saturday. Saturday. Got to get some practice in and that kind of <laughs> yeah. stuff. Yeah, so I don't completely embarrass myself. <laughs> yeah, so stay tuned on that. We'll probably have more information on uh, it next live feed. Next live feed, we're going to show the new Polish A2 version uh, and maybe even a couple new features that I've been working on in the most recent build. So good yeah. news is things are moving full steam ahead. Happy with where things are going. And uh, as always, love your support and yes. follow us. So. Thank you guys for everything. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we bow Yay. to you too for our bow. All right, everyone, have a great evening. Hope we'll see, see you, you here. Back next week. Yes, see, hopefully, see you back next Wednesday, and we'll see you then. All right, everyone, <laughs> have a good night. Bye. Bye.